<laughs> Happy Mother's Day. I'm, so, I'm sorry about the technical difficulties. Uh, but anyway, I hope that you had a better day than we're having right now. Uh, it's, it's been a little trial and error, but I hope you had a great day. And uh, Barb and I, we really enjoyed our day. Is it still uh, we, we, wait a minute, my wife's talking to me. Is it still crooked? Uh, somebody out there can be, it says it looks good. She says it looks good. Okay. Comments are coming in, it looks good. That's all that I need. Anyway, it's good to see Pastor Wirtz uh, today there at uh, uh, Canaan Springs Baptist in Apache Junction. We were able to drive down from Florence, had a good time with him, and the ice cream was really delicious. I hope that you had a chance to get in on some of that ice cream and uh, get your Mother's Day gift. That was really great. And uh, so before I get started, I want to pose these three questions again. So maybe you had a chance to think about them. Uh, the first question is, what is the hardest thing about being a mother? The hardest thing about being a mother. Think about that and maybe post your answer, one sentence or less, in the uh, comment section. The second question is, what do you like best? What's the best thing that you love about motherhood? Uh, put that question, uh, put your answer in the comment field there. I'd like to see what people say about that. And then uh, the third thing is, can you share a special memory that you have of your mother, a special memory you have of your mother. I'm gonna share a few memories that I have of my mother in just a few moments, but I'd like to hear or see what uh, your favorite memory is of your mother. Uh, just a, a quick announcement, and that is uh, next Sunday, I believe is May 17th, uh, Canyon Springs Baptist will again have services open to the public People are invited to come if you feel, uh, if you're comfortable about coming, if you feel safe about it, uh, because the Arizona uh, Attorney General has determined that houses of worship are essential. Well, <laughs> I knew that. Houses, houses of worship are essential. So, uh, therefore, if you want to attend church, it's perfectly okay. You're not going to get arrested. Matter of fact, Sheriff Lamb who is the sheriff at Pinnell uh, County, where uh, <clears throat> where our church is located? <clears throat> Excuse me, where our church is located. He's already said that he won't arrest anybody for going to church. So uh, be a good thing to do. So if you feel like you're comfortable about it, uh, there's not you know we're gonna have the seats spread apart so you don't have to sit real close to anybody. You know, find some place that's you know off in the corner somewhere and. Uh, and uh, if you want to wear a mask, you can wear a mask. If not, you don't have to wear a mask. Uh, there will be no physical contact uh, for this service or for the immediate future. No handshakes or hugs or kisses or anything like that. And uh, so uh, we want to keep the social distancing in, but we just want to be safe. So if you want to come, next Sunday uh, is the time that you can come. Next Sunday morning. Now, ne next Sunday night, there won't be any Sunday school. But at, uh, so services at 1030, there won't be any service at six o'clock and there won't be any service on Wednesday. Uh, those will be online. And by the way, the Sunday morning service will be a live streamed all as well. So if you don't feel safe, you want to watch it online, uh, you can do that as well. So uh, with those announcements, uh, I want to get into the Bible study for tonight. And uh, I want to talk about the fifth commandment, the Ten Commandments. And number five is to honor your father and your mother. So I want to talk about honoring your mother. Of course, you ought to honor your father too, but tonight we're going to talk about honoring your mother. And that, that command, that's, that's uh, unconditional. You, it doesn't say honor your mother if she's a good mother. It says honor your mother without exception. Uh, it's not how good a mother you have but it's the position she holds in your life. And uh, so uh, there are no perfect moms. There are no perfect parents. And only perfect children can demand perfect parents. And I know there's no perfect children out there, so you can't make demands on having a perfect mom or dad. And I know by experience that my mom was far from perfect. And I heard Brother Wirtz mention that as well in his Sunday morning service with a great message this morning on the mother of uh, Timothy. And uh, so uh, if you haven't heard that message, you might go back and listen to it. That was very good. So, uh, you know, if you go into a courtroom 
and you have a judge sitting there, you address the judge as your honor. You honor him. Now, when you address the judge as your honor, uh, that doesn't say a thing about what the guy's like outside of the courtroom. He might be a jerk, but as long as he's wearing that black robe and he's sitting on that bench and he's in that courtroom and he's the judge, then you address him as your honor. It doesn't matter what he's like outside the courtroom. It's the same thing with your mom. Now, uh, we need to honor mom. Now, uh, Barb is the mother of my children. She's a mom. She's an awesome mom. Come here. And uh, so I know my kids are just dying to see uh, her, their mother. And there she is. Isn't she sweet? She's a great mom. And, uh, and I thank the Lord that she is the mother of my children. She has done an awesome job raising our four daughters. And she's an awesome grandmother as well. And a great grandma. I know she doesn't look it, but uh, she's wonderful. And so I thank the Lord for her. And, uh, and, 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 her, and her being a great mother. But I wanna talk for a few minutes about my mom. Uh, my mom, and I got a picture over here. Let's see if I get it. Let's see, if, hold this up. That's my mom. So yeah, that was taken when we lived on Winifred Street. I, I told. That looks like the other house. Anyway, that's my mom. She was a Brit. She was raised in Worcester, England, and uh, she met my dad during World War II when my dad was in the Army fighting uh, for Patton and, uh, in the 7th Armor Division. And uh, so they met while he was there in World War II, and uh, he was in Worcester at the time, and, and uh, my mother met my dad, and uh, they got married. And after my dad got out of the Army, uh, they moved to Detroit, Michigan uh, in uh, 1947, I believe it was. In March 1947 is when they were married. And guess what happened nine months later on December 26, 1947? I came along. I was born. And so um, my mom and my dad, they were very good to me. Uh, uh, I have no complaints about my parents. Uh, they, um, My parents were not what I would say church-growing people. Matter of fact, uh, they only attended church maybe at Christmas or at Easter, uh, but they were good people. They treated me right. Uh, they were good to me, and I never doubted that they loved me. They disciplined me <clears throat> often, I might add. Uh, some of my more dark memories of my mom and my dad was uh, when they uh, would discipline me with a, a belt, with a belt. Uh, we aren't going to talk about that right now, but uh, let me just say that, you know, if you, if you love your kids, you're going to discipline them, and that's what my mom and dad did. Now, my dad, he was a motion picture projectionist. Now, I don't know how they run the theaters nowadays. I mean, they got these multiplex theaters where they got several screens, and, and uh, uh, I don't even know how they, you know, they, they, how many projectionists they have running these different screens. But uh, back in, uh, in the day, in 1964, in the early 60s, they had, my dad worked for the State Wayne Theater in Wayne, Michigan. And uh, he was the projectionist. And they had one feature on, uh, that they would show, maybe two, uh, but that was it, and one screen. And uh, I, would, I liked going to work with my dad because I got to see the movies free. And I'd sit up in the projection booth, and uh, they had big projectors in there, and Consequently, my dad, uh, on, on Saturdays and Sundays, he worked days. And then Friday through, uh, Monday through Friday, he worked nights. They didn't have the theater open during the daytime, but they had evening shows. So that's what my dad did. Uh, he, uh, he worked nights. Now, my mother, uh, who we're talking about here, her name was Pearl, by the way, Pearl Yvonne. And um, my mother, she worked for the Michigan Bell Telephone Company. And she was a service representative there. And so she worked during the day. My dad worked during the nights. So consequently, they didn't see each other very often, except uh, on weekends. And, uh, and that is not a good environment uh, for a marriage to only see your spouse on weekends. 
And uh, so I remember growing up, uh, the phone would ring in the evening and uh, my dad wasn't there, he was at work, but my mother was there and I would answer the phone and uh, some strange guy, some strange man would say, may I talk to your mother? And I didn't think too much at first, but it was the same guy every night calling, asking for my mom. I found out later who it was and I found out later that uh, my mother and this guy were having an affair. And that's a dark area in my mom's life. But uh, that's the truth was is she, she, she was having an affair. And uh, it wasn't long until uh, there was a divorce in the works. I remember my dad talking to me about it. My mom didn't mention too much about it. But uh, there was a divorce coming and and it was a very difficult time because I was at an age where I had to decide, did I want to go live with my mom or do live, live with my dad? And, and uh, I decided that I wanted to live with my dad because I hated the guy that my mom was having this affair with. So, you know, it was, divorce was coming down and it was, there, there, it was in the works. It wasn't finalized yet, but, you know, let me say this about divorce. Divorce is not the unpardonable sin. I know there's people in churches that, our divorce, and I want to tell you that God can still use you. Uh, he has a place for you in His ministry, and uh, uh, divorce really it the, the the people that a divorce hurts the most are the kids, the kids in that family, and so I don't ever want to see anybody go through divorce. I don't recommend divorce. Uh, and when I was pastoring, I'd have to counsel with people, marital counseling. It was not a a, a good time. I one of the things I dreaded about counseling was. Uh, uh, divorce counseling. Uh, so this divorce was was heading, heading down the pipe. Now, uh, there was a fateful day in my life on December the 7th, 1962. Now, December 7th, you might think about that. Uh, Alice Jensen, I think that's your birthday. If you're out there, I'm not sure about that. I think, I think it's December 7th. December 7th is also Pearl Harbor Day. Uh, and that was an infamous day as well. But for me, uh, December 7th, 1962 was a very uh, trying time. Uh, that morning, I was uh, awakened in my bedroom and my mother and my dad were fighting. They were screaming, uh, especially my mother. They were shouting outside my bedroom door. It might have been around 5, 30, 6 o'clock in the morning and, and my mom was shouting and and she, I remember her words. She was saying, you've turned my own mother against me. That's what she said to my dad. You have turned my own mother against me. And my dad, he would say, well, you know, all I was doing was writing a, a letter to your mom to let her know about the divorce. She ought to know that there was a divorce going to happen. And my mother's mother, my grandmother, li still lived in England, and so my mom, she assumed that my dad was trying to turn her mother against her, which it was not. He was just trying to give her some information. But my mother, she was hysterical. She was screaming. And finally, she just screamed. I was in my bedroom. I heard it, and I could still hear her voice. She screamed and says, why don't you just drop dead? That's what she said to my mom, my dad. Why don't you just drop dead? did and she stormed out of the house and went to work. Well, I laid in bed for a while and it was quiet and I finally got up and got dressed and I went off to school. And uh, when I came home from school, Ben Franklin Junior High School, when I got home from school that afternoon, I knew something was wrong because my mother's car was in the driveway. And she didn't usually get home from work till about five o'clock. And here it was about three o'clock. And so I knew there was something going on. Why was my mom home? And so I opened the door and went in and uh, uh, entered, went in the living room. And my mother was there uh, bawling. She was crying. And uh, there was also a man there. And uh, he had an open Bible in his hand. Now, we never saw that. Uh, but here was this, it was a preacher from a local Baptist church. We weren't Baptists, but I don't know how this guy came to visit uh, my mother and I, my mother, but maybe one of the neighbors called or something. But uh, 
my mother, she got off the couch, she ran and she hugged me and, and the preacher came up to me and, and I remember the preacher, he said, uh, I'm sorry to tell you that your dad had a massive heart, heart attack this morning and he's dead. Your dad died of a massive heart attack. And my dad, he was only in his early 40s. He was only in his early 40s, you know. And uh, so when that preacher told me that my ma, my dad was dead, I immediately remembered the last words my mother said to him that morning. Well, why don't you just drop dead? And now he was dead. He was dead. So the preacher took my mother and took my dad, or my, 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 myself, took my mom and myself, sat us down on the couch, and he had that Bible, and he began to show my mom and I how to be, get saved. Basically, uh, I guess it was the Romans wrote, I can't remember exactly the verses, but I do remember uh, him turning to my mother and say, would you like to ask Jesus into your heart and say, save you right now? And she said, oh, yes, yes, yeah, I, I'd like to get saved. And, uh, and, and she was still bawling. And then the preacher turned to me and he said, now, son, would you also like to get saved with your mom right now? Well, all I could think about was, why don't you just drop dead? I was angry at my mom. I was angry at God. And uh, I, 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 didn't, I wasn't thinking about getting saved. But my mother's on one side of me, and she says, Oh, sweetheart, come on, would you please get saved with me? Get saved with me. And the preacher's on the other side. Yes, you need to get saved right now. Today's the day of salvation. And so on one side, my mother's urging me, and on the other side, the preacher's talking to me. And finally, uh, to just get them off my back, just to get them off my case, I said, Okay. What do I need to do? And so we knelt at the couch there, and I remember my mother, she prayed, and with tears, she prayed, and, and she got saved. I believe she genuinely got saved. And then he turned to me, and he said, uh, pray this prayer. Basically, it was a sinner's prayer. God be merciful to me, a sinner. And I prayed the words. I really did. I prayed the words, but I didn't mean it. I, I didn't mean it. I wasn't thinking about it. I just prayed what the preacher told me to pray, but I really wasn't saved. Now, I had my mother fooled. She thought I was saved, and I had the preacher fooled, but you don't fool God. God knows if you're sincere, and God knows if you mean it or not. But I tell you this. In the coming weeks after that, I saw a genuine change in my mother. I really did. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ... He is a new creature. Old things are passed away and all things become new. And I remember getting up in the morning and seeing my mother sitting there at the kitchen table reading her Bible. I never saw that before. Here she was sitting there sipping her British tea and, and, and reading her Bible. And she wanted to go to church. She did. She says, let's go to church. And I didn't want to go to church, uh, but she wanted to go to church and you know, I was still real bitter about the whole situation. And, uh, and so, you know, about four months went by, and, and I really think my mother, you know, uh, I saw this change in her. I saw her reading her Bible and praying and so forth. And, and you know, I didn't want anything to do with it because I didn't, I didn't I, at that particular time, I didn't like my mother. I was angry with my mother, and I was angry with God. I remember about four months later, after my dad died, I remember my mother screaming in pain, in agony, and she grabbed her head and she says, my head, my head, my head. And I didn't know how to comfort her. I, 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 all I did is I ran to the phone and called the doctor, and this was back when doctors made house calls, and, and the doctor came to our house and he looked at her and she was writhing in pain and he gave her a sedative. He gave her a sedative and told me, well, your mother has a pinched nerve in her neck and that's what's causing the pain in her head. And eventually it will go away. Don't worry about it. It's not nothing serious. And, you know, he's the doctor. But I want to tell you, 
it didn't go away. It got worse and worse and worse. My mother, the, the pain in her head was so bad that uh, she couldn't go to work. And, and uh, for two weeks, she just was in agony and pain. I remember those days very clearly. And uh, then one Saturday, I went in. I was going to go out, and I wanted to tell her where I was going, and I went to wake her up. She wouldn't wake up. She was laying there in the bed. I saw her breathing, and, uh, but, uh, but she wouldn't wake up. And I saw that she was stiff on one side of her body. And so immediately I went and I called another doctor. I called our family doctor, Dr. Giniak. And I called him and he came to our house and he looked her over and he immediately called an ambulance that took my mother to the hospital and they found out that she had a brain aneurysm. A blood vessel had burst in her brain and she was in a coma. And she, she was in, in a coma and, and uh, I, I, don't, I think probably maybe that blood vessel burst maybe a, a couple of weeks earlier when she was grabbing her head and said, my, pain, my head, my head, and she was in pain and, and that uh, blood just kept building until finally she went into a coma. Now, I personally, reflecting back, I personally believe that my mom could not live. She was under a lot of stress. And I, couldn't, I think she couldn't live with the guilt of what she told my dad the morning he died. Why don't you just drop dead? And then she comes home for lunch, and he's dead. Now, how would you feel if the last word you said to somebody is drop dead, and then the next time you see them, they're dead. Well, that'd be a lot of stress on you too. And, uh, you know, the Bible says that death and life are in the power of the tongue. Death and life are in the, are in the power of the tongue. That is, your tongue can be used to kill people, and your tongue can be used to give life to people. It's all a matter of how you use it. And my mother used her tongue in the wrong way. And those hateful words from her tongue not only brought death to my dad, but I think it eventually killed her as well. Because my mother never regained consciousness. I remember going to that hospital and seeing her laying there in that hospital bed. They had done brain surgery on her. They had shaved her head and she had her head all bandaged up. Her eyes were black and, and they had tubes running in and out of her. And I really didn't like going to see her that way. And when, when my aunt and uncle would try to get me to go to see my mom, I just never wanted to go. And then finally, she had a second brain aneurysm and she never recovered that. She, she, she died. She, she died. She was only 37 years old. But you know what? I thank God for that preacher that came to our house on December the 7th, 1962, and led my mother to Christ. And one day I will see her again in heaven. I'm looking forward to that because I believe she was really saved. Uh, I was only 16 years old at the time, and I was an only child, and basically I was on my own. I was alone, and uh, I really miss my dad. And I really, believe it or not, I miss my mother. I mean, no matter what my mother did, I, I, I've forgiven her, and, I, and I've loved her dearly. I really do. I, I, I wish she was still alive that I could honor her on this Mother's Day. Um, and by the way, let me just say this, you better honor your mom while you can because you might not have her forever. She might be gone later today or tomorrow or this year or sometime. You better honor your mom while you can and love your mom while you can. And so um, the last five months of my mom's life, she was a Christian. I was not, but she was. And it was great to see her walking with the Lord and wanting to go to church and reading her Bible and praying. I remember those days. I wish I was saved at the same time, but I wasn't. But you know what? I can thank the Lord that about four years later, 
after my mom died, God gave me a second chance to get saved. The first time I just prayed the prayer, I didn't mean it. But I remember telling the Lord about four years later, God, if you will show me those verses again that that preacher showed my mom, I would like to pray and really mean it this time. And God answered that prayer and God used a man that I worked with to send me a gospel track, God's Simple Plan of Salvation. And in that track, I read the very verses that that preacher wrote, said to my mother and led her to Christ. And there at the Nelson Hotel on Mill Street in Plymouth, Michigan, I got next to my bed and I prayed, God, will you please born me again? Because the track said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. I didn't know what to pray. All I know is I need to be born again. And I said, Lord, would you please born me again? And God, God understood what I, the Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so I'm glad that God, he didn't have to, but God gave me a second chance to get saved and I got saved. Are you saved? Can you remember a time in your life where you received the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, that you believe that he died for your sins and he was buried and he rose again, and if you'll call upon him, you'll be saved? See, joining a church has nothing to do with it. Being a good person has nothing to do with it. It's all a matter of having Jesus in your heart. Have you asked Jesus in your heart? He says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. I remember the time and the place my mom got saved. 4655 Winifred Street in Wayne, Michigan, at about four o'clock in the afternoon on December the 7th, 1962. And four years later, at the Nelson Hotel on Mill Street in Plymouth, Michigan, I remember when I got saved and where I got saved. I could take you there. The Nelson Hotel is no longer there. It burned down. But I can take you to the very place where I got saved. Now, if you can't remember a time and a place where you got saved, you better make sure that you are truly saved. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord, for this time where I could uh, share a brief testimony about my mom. I miss her, Lord. I wish, Lord, that I was saved when she was saved. I would like to spend those last couple of months with her, both living for the Lord and going to church. I don't know what, I don't know if my mom can see me right now from heaven, but I hope if she can, what she sees makes her happy. And so, Lord, I pray that if there's anyone listening or watching this video that's not saved, that they'll get saved now. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Well, I hope you'll tune in again on Wednesday. Brother Wirtz will be bringing a message. I believe Brother Wirtz will be bringing a message at, uh, I think, 7 o'clock. And God bless you. Uh, we hope to see you at church or online sometime soon. God bless you.